Good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone that's listening today, wherever you're located, wherever part of the world you're in. We want to welcome you and just ask you to just come along with us on this journey. So I, my topic today is um, the armor, the full armor of God, moving into maturity, the full armor of God. And I want to say that it is the most important thing for you and I as believers in this day and in this pandemic and, and this atmosphere and climate that we are living in to know if you are a believer about the full armor of God. And it's found in Ephesians and it's found in Ephesians chapter uh, 6 verse 11. It says, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, you think about putting on the whole armor of God. Think about it as if you were getting dressed in the morning. You've had your shower, and you are getting dressed, and part of your armor may be your makeup, or part of your armor may be to shave your face and put your cologne on. But anyway, you're putting on your clothes. Now, you're not going to just throw them on. You're going to take time, unless you're in a hurry, but this you can't be in a hurry about. You're going to take your time, and you're going to put on your armor. And you're going to put it on so that it, it's on you. Now, I want to add this to this message. You're not going to take it off after, at the end of the day and put it in the corner. Your armor is for you 24 hours a day. We don't take that armor off or we don't sit it down when the weather or the climate changes. We keep the armor on. That's our protection. And for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And so when you think about that armor and the first part of the armor we're going to talk about is the helmet of salvation when you think about the helmet it kind of protects um, your mind and we have to renew our mind so that we know that what part of the armor works and how it works I believe that there's defensive and offensive parts of the armor um, Every part of that armor is for our benefit as a believer to protect us from the enemy. And we know that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. One of our enemies, uh, the enemy's host of Satan, is always to um, assemble together for mortal combat against the believer. Now think about that. He's always ready to assemble his demonic host for mortal combat against us as believers. And even all of the things and some of the things that are transpiring today uh, are designed by the devil. Now you all know that our believers that are listening to this broadcast that the devil has the lease on this world. His lease is not up. So when you think about it, God is the God to his children. And the devil is the God of this world. And he is doing everything he can to stop the body of Christ, the church of the living God, for fulfilling its mandate, which is the Great Commission. Go out into all the world and preach the gospel to every uh, person. Now, he wants to stop that. And with all the things that have gone on in this environment and climate that we find ourselves in, he's done pretty good. But he didn't count on us knowing who we are in Christ. And so we started streaming. And we got the word out. And we started texting. And we started using Facebook to get the gospel out how, but by whichever means we could. 
And even though now we're moving into here where I live, we're moving into phase two, or we are in phase two, and we can assemble, um, not like we were before, but in keeping in um, agreement with the laws of this land, we can begin to assemble. Well, guess what? We're not going to quit streaming, and we're not going to quit bringing the gospel out to all those who are willing and wanting to listen. We have answers for you. And when you listen to uh, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, it is a gospel of hope. It is the answer of everything that's going on in the world today. It's, it's the enemy bringing his plan openly to let people know that he's still in charge and he is still the God of this world. But the good news is, God is the God of his people. And he wants his people to be ready, willing, and able, and equipped with answers for this day. So as we're saying, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers of darkness, rulers of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. The helmet of salvation. You think about a helmet. And I just thinking about this, um, I think the Apostle Paul was writing this when he was in prison, in the Roman prison. And so he was talking about the different parts of the armor because even though he was in prison, he was still about the Father's business, still ministering the gospel. How many times, if, if we went to prison, would we think about ministering the gospel or would we think about this horrible place that we've wound up in? No, but he, in prison, was still writing. He was still ministering. So the helmet of salvation is the knowledge of your position in God because of your and my salvation and the redemption in Christ. Now, you know we are redeemed from the, 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 the curse of the law. We're redeemed from that. But if we don't know that, sometimes we start operating under that curse. And because our whole armor is not on and we do not know uh, what has been provided for us or we have not renewed our mind with the word of God, it, it, it also says, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. What does that mean? I have to allow the mind of Christ to come in me as I'm reading, studying, meditating on his word. And I'm not talking about reading the word of God all the way from Genesis to Revelation in a year. Because there's very little revelation that I'm going to get. I'm just reading. But when I sit there and I begin to meditate on a scripture, as I begin to meditate and, 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 and meditate and meditate, th th meditate, then I receive revelation of what that scripture means. The helmet of salvation. Think about that is the knowledge of your position in God because of your salvation and your redemption in Christ. The helmet of salvation protects your mind. The helmet of salvation protects your mind. And that is Satan's chief battleground is your mind. He brings his suggestions to your mind. He brings his thoughts to your mind. And if you're not developed enough, you will not realize and understand that this is not the thought that you're thinking. There's been a thought incepted into your mind. So when our mind is covered by the blood of Jesus, and you think about it in, in uh, Hebrews, it talks about how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. So we say that we apply the blood of Jesus to our minds. Just like in the Old Testament, they put it over the doorpost. Well, this is the doorpost. It is not for your car. It is not for your house. His blood, he did not shed his blood for your house 
or your car or for your possessions. If you have the mind of Christ and the wisdom of God, you'll know how to protect them if you understand what that armor is and what you can speak as you speak his word over the things. So a lot of times we do things by rote or because we heard someone else do them and we start doing them. But the helmet of salvation protects the mind. And the blood of Jesus purges my conscience from all dead works to serve the living God. So that I am not all over the place. I'm focused and I realize that when a thought comes in that's unnatural and I start entertaining it. Because if you entertain something long enough, you, it is going to manifest because you're thinking about it. That's why it's so important as believers that we renew our mind with the word of God. And then it tells us also to think on these thoughts, whatsoever is good, whatsoever is lovely, whatsoever is of a good report, think on these things. Now, so if I get a thought that comes into my mind that's not good, lovely, and it's not a good report, I'm going to just do that or, or, or say this is real or true? No, I am going to sit there and think, hmm, this is not good. This is not lovely. This is not a good report. So why am I going to meditate on those things? The helmet is important. It is the helmet of our salvation. It protects our salvation. The helmet of salvation also includes your mind renewed to know and understand your rights and privileges in Christ who you are in. We are in Christ and he is in us. So when you think about the renewing of a mind, there's a purpose for that because the mind being the battlefield, the arena, all kind of thoughts come to you and I and we cast down those imaginations. We bring that thought captive into the obedience of the Lord Jesus Christ. But it takes a study. It takes not just reading to read or to be able to quote the scripture. It takes revelation of that scripture. And so that's why in Ephesians, the apostle Paul, when he was, was uh, talking to the church at Ephesus and he was telling him, that uh, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, would give unto us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Think about that, that he would give unto you and I the, 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 the wisdom and the revelation. And so you think about when you're meditating on that and meditating on it, and I re re uh, remember reading in Brother Hagin's one of his books, and he said that... Um, he began to meditate on that and pray that and leave the, the Bible to that chapter, which is Ephesians chapter 1, and I think it starts in verse 14. But he began to leave that chapter open on his pulpit. And every time he would pass by, he would pray that over himself. Well, what's, what was he doing? Why, would he, why couldn't he pray something else? Well, he was trying to get to a place of revelation and understanding of the word of God. So as he began to meditate, as he began to pray that, he began to understand it. My goodness, what have I been preaching all these years? Because he had a deeper revelation and understanding. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. So it's most important that the helmet protect this mind. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. It is important that we understand what each part of the armor of God is. And we're going to take the time um, during these broadcasts as we're moving into maturity to find out which part of the armor uh, and what does it do? How many parts are there? And what do they do? And how do they protect me? There's the sword of the spirit. There's, there's many parts of the armor of God that are for us. And you think about how privileged we are as believers that God left us with protection. He left us with Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ left us not alone. He left us with the comforter. And so thinking about the armor of God, it also says, um, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against 
principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So the enemy is working in the realm of the spirit to defeat the believers, to defeat the plans and purposes of God for our lives. Through suggestions, he makes his suggestions like it's only a suggestion. It is only a suggestion until we begin to meditate on that. And then we think that that thought was our thought. And a lot of times those thoughts have an assignment attached to them to cause us to make rash decisions or cause us to think something about someone else or there's a purpose for him because the enemy is not attacking us for no reason. His whole thing and plan is to stop you from fulfilling the mandate and the plan of God for your life. But in the heat of a suggestion and that we're meditating on it and thinking about it, we don't think about that plan. Why? Because the plan of God is not fully engrafted in each one of us. The helmet of salvation protects your mind. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. So I think about, I was um, uh, received a message from a, a friend of mine, and they were telling me, we were, you know, uh, about their son. And, you know, all the things that are going on and, and that he was... Um, he wanted to find a peaceful demonstration that was going on. So he just felt led by the Spirit of God to be a part of that. So I wrote her my stand on this whole thing. And we were, we were uh, going back and forth. And so she realized that her son had left and he wasn't home. Now you think about, we're talking about the armor of God, the protection of God. And so he wasn't there. And so... Um, she said that she had begun to panic just a little bit because he had said that he was looking for a peaceful uh, demonstration that he could become a part of because he just wanted to um, stand for the kingdom of God. And think about how many people that are believers that went to those demonstrations and were a part that are operating in the plan of God and some of them that are not. But anyway... He came home, and I think he burst through the door, if I'm correct, at about 8 o'clock. And she said to me that the anointing of God was so present on him that she felt it when he walked in the door. And what he had done, he had picked up his old, an old Bible that was in his home, and he went to this place where all of these young um, millennials, teenagers or something, were, were ministering, I mean, were demonstrating and he pulled out his bible and he preached the gospel to them and then prayed with them now i would say he was right in with what god had ordained and he said that it was so um moving in his spirit man that he felt that he had to do this that was a calling and the end was good. The protection was there because he went under the unction of the Holy Spirit. Think about that. How many times we move out and we think it's God or we don't even check with God to see if this is his plan. We just do it. Now, the helmet protects the mind, but the helmet can't protect us from making mistakes um, if we haven't checked with God. So the helmet has a... Um, plays a great role in our lives. And how can you check and see if it is God move, telling you? Well, he said that it thing just, he was telling his mother, it was just burning in him. And he didn't say anything. He just got on his bicycle and went to this place where all of these young people were demonstrating and marching. And he felt led. He got, brought his old Bible and he preached to them. Praise God for the souls that got saved. Praise God. So we know that he was following it. But you know, because you're hearing this story, you can't go out and do that 
Because if God hadn't led, hadn't led him, it may have been a different story. But he was led under the protection of God, and he came up the glorious testimony. The helmet of salvation also guards our mind against thoughts. Okay, think about that. We get thoughts every day, but we can't say, well, I'm going to put my, 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 I'm going to put my helmet on today. No, the helmet should be there. And you meditate on who you are and who you are in Christ, your identity, your position in God. He says also, the, 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 uh, Isaiah said, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Now, where is our trust? Is it in our government? Is it in uh, the demonstrators? Is it in a position that we have maintained or mentally ascended to our trust if you are a believer is in christ that is where our trust is he says i will keep him he will keep you and i in perfect peace because our mind is stayed on him the helmet of salvation is sitting there and is sorting out all the thoughts of the enemy that we would think that would come to seed you or infiltrate your mind. So the helmet is there. It has a it this it has a function. Every part of God's armor has a function for you and I. But if we override that function and continue with that thought, then you're going to have some fruit here that you're going to have to curse because it is going to come up to the degree that you meditate on it. Thou shalt keep or wilt keep him in perfect peace. It's not the peace that, oh, everything is wonderful and everything is fine. It's the peace of God that comes from being in him, knowing that I am in the midst. Like, like my friend's son, he was in the midst of problems, trouble, when he went to, to preach the gospel to these demonstrators. But he was kept in perfect peace because his mind was stayed on God and he was led by the Spirit of God to go and do this. He says, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, Isaiah said, whose mind, now think about that, our mind. We've heard quotations, a mind's a terrible thing to loss, to lose. But you think about it, we're supposed to have the mind of Christ. We're supposed to think the the um, eyes of our understanding being enlightened that we may know what is the hope of his calling okay and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in us there's an inheritance in us that is given to us through the sacrifice the death burial and resurrection of jesus christ in Philippians, it says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I have to allow that. So when that mind of Christ I've allowed is in me, and there's a renewing, a changing, even a changing of my thought patterns or the way I used to think before salvation. See, anytime I start thinking those thoughts after salvation something hasn't taken hold because if i allow his mind to be within me then i begin to realize that that's this is an old man's thought this is not the new man's thought this is an old man's way this is not the new man's way so then i have to make sure that what i'm hearing and meditating on is from the word of god i have to study this word there's 66 books of this wonderful word, the love letters to you and I. There's 66 books of them. I have to begin to understand them. I have to um, meditate on it day and night so that I can grow in him to the place of maturity and let the old man die and the, the, the new recreated man come to full maturity. Every benefit 
and every blessing we possess in our redemption, including complete and total victory over Satan, which is possible, is based on Jesus and his triumph over Satan at the cross. Now, I know that's a whole mouthful, but if you begin to meditate on that, see, we are the head and not the tail. We're above and not beneath. The greater one lives within you and I. And the greater one that lives in us is greater than he that's in all the world. And what we're seeing played out on the stage of this world today is the lesser one fulfilling his plan to destroy. He's the thief. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But God says, but I have come that they may have life. That is exciting to me. I can have life more abundantly. The greater one lives in each one of you that have received Jesus as their Lord and Savior. You may not have it all together today, but don't worry about it. Just keep pressing into his word. Just keep meditating on his word. Just keep living his word, studying his word, praying that the eyes of your understanding become enlightened. And you will be surprised that old things will truly pass away and your walk and your life with him will become new. Thank you for watching today. I hope this message has blessed you as much as it has blessed me.